The other dropped something and ran away. The other person dropped something. Could you explain? Sure. At the time, I didn't know what exactly he had dropped. But when we got closer, we totally figured it out. Right, darling? Huh? Uh, yeah. It was those old books. Oh ho! Old books? Yes, sir. Several books had fallen on the ground around the victim. If I'm correct, this photograph confirms your testimony. Totally. When that evil Japanese guy did the deed, he dropped them. You still haven't proved that it was the defendant that you saw. But we saw him. There's no way that it wasn't him. Look at that moustache. That sad hunched back. That sunken face. Everything matches. Pretty sure he's just throwing insults around at this point. <laughs> yeah, he looked down at the poor victim with the most horrifying expression. And suddenly, he threw the books everywhere and ran off. Really? This is bad. It doesn't look like she's lying. There's not a shred of... There's not a shred of doubt in this testimony. It's no surprise coming from a early couple. Go on, continue your testimony. <laughs> Sir. As he just fell back asleep. We hurried as fast as we could to the nearest police box to call for help. Was your husband the one who, that ran to notify the police? Nope, it was me, the proud policeman's wife. Right, darling? Huh? Oh, yep. I asked her to do it. My shift may have been over for the day, but... As a policeman at heart, I still have a duty to watch over the crime scene. Indeed, preservation of crime scenes is an important part of the policeman's duty. So instead, I had Rolla go for me. She notified the police in charge of that district. Uh, sorry. What do you mean by district? Depending on where a crime takes place, the investigation is assigned to a certain district. The footpath that the victim was on wasn't part of my beat. So I told my beloved Roller where to find the police box so she could gather policemen. I ran as fast as I could to the police box and got the attention of the police there. You could call this our, our loving teamwork. Thanks to your teamwork, the case was resolved quickly. You are exemplary citizens. Oh, you're making me blush. Right, darling? Oh yeah, Roll is the best. <laughs> Just keep testifying, please. What the hell? <laughs> that Japanese man is the one who ran away. Pat and I both saw it with our own eyes. Would you really be able to see his face that, that clearly with just gaslighting? Back off you, don't you underestimate a Londoner's eyesight? What now? Lighting from a gas lamp is more than enough. Especially because that pesky fog was thinner than usual. Uh huh, the fog. Go on. London has become famous all the world over for its fog. But for us, it's hard to see it as a good thing. Because on days when it's especially foggy, you can hardly see your own hands. Okay, I get it. Just let your husband go, please. Every day our eyesight is tempered by the fog. We're absolutely sure when we say it was that Japanese guy over there. Right, darling? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely the defendant. Look at that moustache. That sad hunched back. That sunken face. Everything matches. At the very least, we've confirmed that these two were confident about their testimony. 
the man they saw fleeing the scene was Suski. Is that all they have to say? How are you feeling now, Rahodo? Well, my first impression in impression on hearing the testimony is uh bad. With the way that they testified, I'm not sure that we have much room to argue. There's little doubt that they really did witness Suski fleeing the scene. I had the same thoughts. Were you? But even if they did, what does that mean for us? Hmm. I suspect the jury would gladly vote guilty, if that were the case. No way. What am I supposed to do that? Uh, here. Sheesh. <laughs> Chin up, we'll be fine. Maybe. At a time like this, Kazuma... What would Asugi do? I think he would search for contradictions in the finer parts of their testimony. What finer parts? If we keep badgering them about Suski, things will only get worse. Instead, we want to search for any possible contradictions in their testimony. If we bring those contradictions to light, it'll show that their memory is unreliable. Okay. Wow. The only way forward is to find some sort of contradiction in the testimony. Otherwise, it's very likely that the trial will will be ending early today. This is getting intense. Indeed. Excuse me, Mr. Attorney. Could I ask you something? Yes, ma'am, what is it? You've been badgering us about all these little details. And I bet you think we're liars, don't you? What the fuck is this? What? N no way! I swear I don't. I'm a policeman's wife and I'm telling you I saw everything. For example, hey. You know all those filthy books at the crime scene? I remember every single every single one of the names of those books. Well you're just gonna apprehend me anywhere. Now there's no need to yell. Yes there is. That stupid Asian doesn't know what this wife is capable of. And even if I let it pass, Pat would take him down in an instant. Look, I'm sorry, just let him go, please. Our brave witnesses... Our witness is permitted to add this statement to a testimony. Oh, will that please you, madam? Yeah, yeah, let me say it over and over. Right, darling? I even remember the names of all four books that the criminal dropped. Go on, try me. Wait a minute. Four books? Four books? I thought there was only three. There are three. Unless the fourth is like behind them. That's what we're going to bring up. What's this fourth book? Can you tell me more about these four books that had fallen at the crime scene? Of course. I totally remember them. Somewhere under the sea, Monsieur Someone, something tales and adventure of something. It really does pain me to say this, but... There's a major issue with your testimony. Not the fact that you don't remember them. W what? There should have only been three books at the scene of the crime. Hmm? Take a look at this photo of the crime scene. As you can tell, there are only three books in the picture. What? No! No way! I swear, I saw it! Oh, I know, that's it. Of course it is. What is it? That dead body's in the way. The last book is under that dead tub of lard. You just can't see it. Well, she's not really dead, but... You know. I'm sorry, Rolla. But there is no possibility that Suski could have dropped four bucks. He only rented three of them. What? This is interesting. If you're so sure about it, then you must have some sort of proof, right? Uh, the receipt. You want proof? You got it. Defense, the court orders you to present the evidence. 
What evidence proves that the, def that the defendant didn't drop far bucks? Here it is. Blow me. Ha! Suckers. Obviously, it's this receipt. Tattletales Book Emporium. The details of what Suski bought at the bookshop are recorded on this receipt. But as you can see, only three books are listed. N no way. There's no way Suski could have dropped four books when he was only holding three. This calls into question the accuracy of what the witness saw. Hmm. And thus... Her testimony that the defendant... Wait. Oh, was the same man as the criminal she saw? Might possibly be another mistake. What? 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 Ha! Although I am curious, if I can. When it gives me chance. If it gives me chance. I want to know how old they are. They look really young. Pat. 23 and 21? Oh wow. They look... They don't look that old. I must say. The most disappointing one among us is you, Japanese boy. What now? These witnesses saw the defendant fleeing from the scene of the crime. You knew that... You knew that you couldn't disprove this fact. So instead, you decided to sweep it under the rug and nitpick at these small inconsistencies. Is that about right? How can he see right through me? But your poorly prepared plan did nothing but backfire. What do you mean? It's simple. Our diligent constable's wife testified correctly. There were no con contradictions. Uh huh? After the crime, there were undoubtedly four bucks left on Briar Road. Okay. But if you look at the photo of the crime scene, there's only three. Isn't it clear that there are only three bucks? Yes. Oh, there were only three bucks in view of the camera. In view? You don't mean... I've brought another photo with me. It shows what the victim was holding. Oh. The Adventures of the Lion S. Men. Oh, the Lion's Men. <laughs> ah, I'm stupid. Th that's... The fourth book. As you can clearly see... The last book is hidden beneath the victim's body. Well, not really. No. It can't be. Grit. Order, order. Order in the cart. Huh. See? See? Look. Look at it. Take a good look. Okay. Jesus. It's just like I said. Right, darling? You got that right, Roller. You're the greatest. Shall we examine the defendant's bookshop receipt in closer detail? Witness, repeat to us the names of the books you saw. Uh, Monsieur Someone? That would be Monsieur Lacoque. The Something Tales. The Canterbury Tales. Somewhere under the sea. 20,000 leagues under the sea. So far, all of the titles of these books have matched the receipt exactly. In my opinion, that shows brilliant capacity for observation and recollection. Aw, oh, thank you. Did you hear that, darling? Damn right, three chairs for Orla. Then the fourth book, the one missing from the receipt. Don't think too hard now. The book shown in the picture is the fourth book. But this is mystifying indeed. I wonder why the fourth book isn't listed on the receipt. There's nothing mystifying about it. The victim is the one holding the fourth book. Therefore, this book belongs to the victim herself. So the victim was holding her own book. By the way, 
What do you think happened to that last book? As we all know, Scotland Yard wouldn't overlook this. I have it here with me, preserved as evidence. Very well. The court demands that you submit the picture and the book as evidence. As you wish. Crime scene photo 2, another photograph taken by the police at the crime scene. The book is clearly visible in the victim's hand. Fourth book. A book named The Adventure of the Lion's Mane, found in the victim's hand during the crime scene investigation. Whip, whip. That is all. The prosecution has no further evidence. How can this be? This was the obvious outcome, Japanese boy. You've tried so hard to put up every scrap of feeble resistance you could, mus you could muster. Your closing argument concluded with a red herring. A possibility of him taking the long way. And your cross-examination concluded with worthless doubts about the witness's test uh, memory. But in the end, maybe he's right. Yep, we only told the truth of what we saw. Nothing but the truth. Right, darling? Yeah, Roller. <laughs> Marry me, Roller. Now I'd like to hear the jury's thoughts on the matter once again. Need we, waste, need we waste more time before we bring holy judgment on the Japanese devil? This will be the last time. Citizen jurors of the capital, we, re we request your sage verdict. Oh, there was only three of them. We've exhaustively investigated all of, all of the witnesses and the evidence. There's no point in further deliberation. Narahodo, this is an extremely delicate situation. I know, but... If I just throw out a basis objection, it could make things even worse. What are you going to do here, Ryunosuke Narahodo? Raise objection. Hold it, please. It's too late, attorney. This cross-examination was your last chance at a rebuttal. Now that it has, en it has ended, the discussion of the evidence has been concluded as well. That may be, but... I can't do it. The right words just won't come out. May I have a word with you, prosecutor? I believe it's a little rash to say that we've finished going over everything. Hmm. I shouldn't be surprised, considering you came come from a lawless oriental land. But at this point of the trial, a legal assistant should know not to open her mouth. Hmm. I'm so far too inexperienced as an attorney. So, I'm sorry if it's such a problem for you. But I still, I still need my legal assistant's aid. Narahodo. Hell yeah! The core philosophy of our empire is tolerance. I will allow the legal assistant to speak. Susato, if you please. Alright then, let's hear what you have to say, legal assistant. Where could you possibly see any more room for deliberation? Naturally, no evidence was submitted at the end of the last cross-examination. Then you mean... This... There still remains evidence that needs to be examined, is that correct? Are you ready for this, Narahoda? It's likely that if we fail to present vital evidence at this point, the judge really will demand a verdict from the jury. Of course, we'll also be asked why the evidence is so important. I suggest carefully examining the new evidence before you present any anything. Okay. I'll do that now. The book. Oh, oh, it's burnt. Oh. I see. My, look, look at this. What a terrible burn. Well, oh, it must be unreadable in this state, especially the latter half of it. It's such a shame for this to happen to a good book. 
Hell yeah, it is. Upon further examination, it seems that the burn was rather recent. The book was burned recently, huh? Something about this bothers me. Could it be the argument between what's it? Um, I can't remember his name. Joan and her husband. I can't remember his name though. A book named the image of the lion's mane found in the victim's hand. The back has been burnt to a crisp. Hooray! Is that everything? I guess so. Right, so we've done that. Understood. Thank you, Sasato. Sasato gave me this final chance. I can't let it go to waste. The defense is prepared to present evidence. Haha. <laughs> Alright, well. The court will allow the defense to present one final piece of evidence. Which piece of evidence holds a vital yet dormant clue that has yet to be investigated? Fourth book. That would be what is shown in the new photo of the crime scene. Specifically, the fourth book left at the scene. I do believe that we've already reached a conclusion regarding this book. It's clear that it is unrelated to the incident beyond being in the victim's possession. There's absolutely no need to look into this book any further. The court does agree with the prosecution on this matter. However, the defense made a certain claim earlier. He said that there is a clue dormant within this piece of evidence. The court requests that you show us this clue. Are you prepared, attorney? Um, well, of course. Narahara. The prosecution is desperately trying to avoid further investigation of this book. I think that this means you're moving along the right path. No, okay, understood. Attorney, the court orders you to show us this new clue. What vital clue is left on the fourth book? Got it. Would you allow me to show you the back of this book? The back? Ah, it's... It's been burnt to a crisp. The book's in awful condition. I have to wonder why the victim would bother to carry... Uh, carrying such an unreadable book. It's definitely unnatural, don't you think? Unnatural? What about it, Japanese boy? Huh? Unnatural or not, should this burn have no ties to the case, then it is not worth arguing over. However, if you mean to assert that the burn of this book is a clue, then what truth is this clue supposed to lead us to? burned book. Actually, there is one possibility that comes to mind. It's a far-fetched possibility, but I have to run with it. Alright, the defense is prepared to share its thoughts. Now the court must ask you to present one more answer, attorney. What is the truth to be gleaned from the burn marks on this book? The owner! One reasonable truth to be gleaned from the burns of this book is the true owner of this book. What? But it's already obvious who it belongs to, isn't it? The lady who got stabbed was clutching it in her hand. I can't claim to know exactly how the book ended up in her hand like that. But... As for who owns this book and where it came from, the defense may be able to make that clear. But how? Fine, I shall play along with your desperate squirming for now. But remember, that squirming might lead you to an unfavorable verdict. Attorney, your answer to the following question may change the direction of this trial. Who is the true owner of this mercilessly scorched book? Though well, technically, wouldn't it be John? But I'd say Joan. Oh, it does say that. She is a juror. I thought as much. Wait a minute. Are all the jurors in this? No, they're not. I was hoping that Oscar would be. Happens to be on the jury for this trial. One of the jurors. 
That would be the landlords of Mr. Natsume's flat. The Garadeb family. The landlords? I don't know if it's a wild coincidence, or if it was fate. But among the six citizens chosen as, the, chosen as this trial's jury, one of the Garadebs is present right now. Mrs. Garadeb. Me? Please, hold on. I, I, um, y you see, I'm not his wife to begin with. I'm just his maid. We can leave your odd marital circumstances aside for now. All I need is for you to answer one simple question. Wasn't this book in Mr. John Garadeb's room? I, I've never seen that book before. Why do you think I... Mm. You must have lost your mind, Japanese boy. The defendant's landlord? Really? You have no basis for your claim, yet you dare point that vile finger at a law-abiding citizen. No forgiveness could be given for such an act. Or to such an act. The two of us happen to know the truth. On the day of the crime, about the time when the victim was stabbed, one more incident was unfolding in Mr. Garadev's room. One more? What in the world are you speaking of? A fire. Indeed, the whole fiasco happened in the blink of an eye. The moment the flames flared up, the whole room was engulfed in thick smoke. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before the fire spread to the furniture. I ended up losing the adventures of the lion's mane. Ah, I didn't even... I'd forgotten about that entirely. And I was just getting to the good part. The adventures of the, lion, of the lion's mane. It's the same name as the book we have here. What a coincidence. Ah. Boulder Dash. All it means is that two books of the same name had been burned. That book was likely lost in the fire anyway. There's no possible way that it could have been moved to the crime scene. Just so you know, the cause of the fire was apparently a fight between the, Gar the Garadebs. I'll leave out the details, but the wife was absolutely furious. Even as the flames raced around them, she kept attacking Mr. Garadeb. Well, I can never imagine that. Right, darling? You all hear that? Rollers as pacifist... pacifistic as they get. All of my favourite old books were lined up on, the back, on that bookshelf, but now... Oh, now they've been swallowed by the flames, burnt to a crisp, just like that. And to add insult to injury, my very own wife threw those books at me in a fury. She drove me back to the window, assaulting me with burning books. Oh! So it flew out the window. She threw the book toward the window, then... Oh, it can't be! The book flew through the window toward the crime scene? Indeed. On that night, I briefly investigated the nearby homes in hopes of gaining information. I was not informed that Mr. Garadev's window had been broken. Right, and when we visited, the glass was intact. But at the time, the window might have been open. It was not. The crime took place on a winter night that would freeze any man to his bone. A Londoner would have never left his window open. But well... Hmm... Are you making an earnest ass assertion, attorney? Do you claim that this book was burned and thrown out of the home by an angry wife? I believe it's possible. I've heard enough. Who's this? Joan? Joan. Now, now you all see, right? That self-proclaimed... Wow! Japanese attorney over there is nothing but a yellow-bellied coward. What do you mean by coward? You say our home almost turned into a sea of flames in the middle of a fight. And you say I'm pretending to be a maid to keep up appearances. None of that's related to this trial, you're just hurling insults at me. No, I swear I'd never. To think you would insult a Londoner just to distract everyone from the truth. Now if you hit him, 
You think that's gonna fly? You don't see that you're a monster? She's absolutely right. That's definitely Oscar then. Huh? We'll listen to his side of, it, of the argument just to be sure of our verdict. But now look. There's only one person who could have stabbed the victim in the back. It was the man who ran away from the scene. That mustachioed little man. It does seem that way. It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, you've got it. Sure as hell. Hmm? What was that? Oh my god. It would seem... That the jurors have all come to a conclusion once again. What are your thoughts, Lord Van Zeeks? Oh, he'll love it. These further deliberations were little more than a waste of time. But now maybe we can make up for those precious minutes we lost. Hey, wait. The mystery of the fourth book still hasn't. <gasps> After this trial is over, you can have your fun with that mystery once you return home. It doesn't look like he's willing to apologise for his, his impudence this time. Very well. Now, Jairus, the time has come once again. Present your verdict to the court. Is it all going to be voiced again? Oh, yeah. You God. You yes, I. You yes, I. You Fuck. Ah, oh, hell. Not again. The jury has certainly made its verdict clear. Another guilty verdict. And this time... No, no, hold on. Keep facing forward. Hmm? Suzuto. Have you forgotten? This battle is far from over. Do you mean... Yes. The defense still has the right to a closing argument. One more closing argument. To over overturn this mistaken verdict. Oh my god, really? My lord. The defense asserts our right to a closing argument. Hmm. Surely you should be running out of seeds of deceit to sow by now. This isn't deceit. This closing argument is for the pursuit of truth. This isn't the time to hang my head, as long as there's a chance. I have to stand tall and keep facing forward. Wait, to be continued? Please. I would like to end the session. Yeah! Nice. For some fucking reason, I disconnected. So, uh, I think... I'm hoping the YouTube video is fine. Or the, the stream on YouTube's fine. It got cut into two in on Twitch, for some reason. No, like, I dropped no frames, it just popped up saying disconnected. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, the it's been split into two parts on Twitch. Like, the first part is an hour and 25, and then the second part is, like, 14 minutes. What a pen. Oh, well. Shit happens, I suppose. Regardless... That is going to be the end of this session. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And until next time, take care.